if you focus on gender equality, then uh, you've covered a big milestone in terms of economic development. Uh, it is well documented that uh, women are catalysts and they have a multiplier effect or in terms of economic development. For example, in the recent uh, World Bank, uh, they say that uh, to be a smart economist, you need to invest in women because you get higher yields in terms of development agenda. So um, invest in women and a, a woman who is economically empowered, who has a stream of income coming in, uh, is bound to spend more on her family and communities. In Africa, uh, women still have issues in terms of uh, accessing credit and financial services because sometimes when women go to the bank and they need loans, they are not able to get loans without a husband or a father co-signing with them. There have been many efforts in uh, trying to bring women and giving them credit using the microfinance uh, credit schemes, but they have, they have failed to work well. Or for three reasons, because uh, their loans are not so flexible and they don't train them on what to invest in. Again, the interest rates are too high and then again, they expect the payment immediately. So they have not worked so well so far. But uh, women in Africa have been able to come together in small groups, form s small saving clubs and been able to invest um, in big things so that women are now landowners and property owners in Africa. The woman who inspired me the most was Wangari Mathai. She's a Kenyan. Uh, not because I share a common name with her, but because of how phenomenal she was. Uh, for example, in terms of academics qualifications, she was the first woman to get a PhD in the whole of East Africa. She was the first senior lecturer in the University of Nairobi, the first professor. So she was a first in many things. And she was the first Nobel Peace Prize winner in 2004, African woman.